A foundation stone of federal legitimacy is that agencies carry out policies enacted by Congress or initiated by the occupant of the Oval Office. Agency employees traditionally refrain from advocating particular policies, yet the billion dollars the government spends annually on public affairs activities sometimes strays into propaganda. That's according to analysis by the right-of-center think tank R Street Institute. Joining me with more, Senior Fellow and Governance Project Director Kevin Kosar. Kevin, good to have you on. Thank you for having me here. Now, we should say R Street doesn't stand for Republican Street, but for the fact that your institute was originally on R Street in D.C. Yes, we're not uh, we're not the Republican Street Institute, and you could find plenty of Republicans who will have all sorts of problems with our analyses. And we should also point out that your report co-author, one of your co-authors, is on the opposite political spectrum of the organization as a whole. Jack Hamilton is a professor of journalism at Louisiana State University, and uh, he and I uh, have some differences on policy. And uh, before we wrote this paper, we actually convened a conference of diverse folks, folks who work in government, people who work in the private industry, to inform us so that we could write this white paper and, and make it as best we could. So what is your main finding here uh, within that billion dollars of spend? Is there propagandizing going on, or is it just pure public affairs, straightforward stuff? Uh, propaganda is happening, and uh, to be very clear, this is not an Obama administration innovation. It's been going on since the founding of this country. But what we see is that propaganda kind of has an uptick when there's a communications technology revolution. We saw that in the early 20th century when radio hit, and we've seen it after the Internet's arrival. So you see the propagandizing mainly in social media? Uh, social media, uh, but even the more traditional forms of communications that agencies put out. Agency testimony. Used to be that an agency would draw up testimony, deliver it in paper format to the Hill. The audience for it was quite limited. Maybe it would be released to a reporter ahead of time. Now uh, agencies whack it up on their website and they realize that their target is not just the legislators, but the media and the American public as a whole. So that creates the incentive to spin. Give us an example of what you've seen recently. Well, one glaring example is the Department of Labor, um, an important agency, uh, an agency that's been around for decades, and an agency that has unfortunately strayed heavily into politics recently. The DOL created a web page that advocated on behalf of increasing the minimum wage. Now, however you feel about the minimum wage, whether it should go up or down, this is not something DOL should do because the minimum wage is set by Congress, by act of Congress. They should carry out whatever the minimum wage policy that is set by Congress eventually becomes, but they should not be advocating for a particular policy. Correct. Yeah, we've had on the books for over 100 years a, a statute that prohibits agencies from engaging in grassroots lobbying. Instead of speaking to Congress, agencies going to the public and saying, hey, you the people, tell Congress to do something different, change the policy. Um, that's not legal, uh, and it's not legal for good reasons. Now, 50 percent or so, or maybe 60 percent of that billion dollars is spent by the Defense Department. A lot of that is advertising for their recruitment efforts. So given the fact that most of the money is spent by DOD, did you find any evidence of them doing propagandizing? Well, this is where it gets complex, because how do you define propaganda? Is it utter falsehood? Is it a mixture of truth and falsehood? Is it creating a positive perception that may not square with reality? Um, DOD, when it's engaged in propaganda, um, sometimes it's been flagged for just questionable expenditures. You know, why are you putting pricey advertisements on the hood of NASCAR vehicles? Uh, but in other instances, the DOD has actively uh, tried to sculpt public perceptions. Um, most famously, uh, during the Iraq War, DOD worked with certain retired generals and gave them special access, special briefings, often flew them overseas, and then let them go out and talk to media and explain how the war effort was going so grandly. And they were also, I believe, generating stories that could be run free on delivery you know, by different publications. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's been one thing that uh, DOD's PR shop and other agencies, PR shops have been doing, which is to create canned media. Uh, video news releases have been around for a couple of decades now where they hire a communications consultant who poses as a reporter, uh, ask agency people softball questions, uh, and then they turn around and hand it out. And 
frequently it gets rerun as news with no disclaimer saying that this was actually produced by the government. We're speaking with Kevin Kosar, Senior Fellow and Governance Project Director at the R Street Institute. Any other examples that are egregious? We've mentioned labor and some of the prior practices of DOD. Well, another recent one was the Environmental Protection Agency. Again, an agency that has an important public mission and the waters of the United States rule. You know, this gets a little geeky, but we have laws on the books about environmental controls, uh, things that you shouldn't be doing to the environment, then agencies have to interpret them and they issue rules to do that. And the idea in the rulemaking process is the agency is supposed to reach out to the public and affected industry groups and say, what do you think about this? Then take that information back and use it to come up with a smarter policy that has greater democratic legitimacy and buy-in. And unfortunately, what EPA did was put out the rule and then run a PR campaign to lard up the public record with positive comments from supportive uh, environmental groups. Again, how you feel about waters of the United States as a policy, whether it's smart or not smart, is not the issue here. It's the agency trying to manipulate the public record and the public opinion. And so it seems like something Congress would be concerned with. Any evidence that they are watching this type of thing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Certainly the Senate Budget Committee has been all over it. Oh, this. Um, they're the ones who requested that uh, GAO do a report on how much money is being spent on propaganda and how many people are being paid to do it. And that report came out just a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, various uh, members of Congress are writing directly to agencies and doing so in a public way and demanding answers about why are you doing these things, how much are you spending, and how exactly does this square with your duties under the law. Because the GAO, I believe, made no specific recommendations in that report. They simply outlined the extent of spending on public affairs and public relations. Yeah, that was GAO's charge. And it was uh, surprising that GAO had to do that because you would think that agencies would, as a matter of course, report how much they're communicating with the public, how many people they're paying to do it, and uh, you know, produce an annual inventory. But they don't, as a matter of course. It only happens when Congress says GAO Please audit them. I think another interesting phenomenon was in that report, and I believe you mentioned it somewhere in your report also, is that uh, the number of public affairs officers has been on the rise in the federal government. Yeah, yeah. Communications uh, is, well, this is what happens after, after a communications technology revolution. I mean, government started hiring lots of radio people in the early 20th century after radio came out. They just started poaching people. Uh, they started poaching people from Madison Avenue, an advertising agency. Um, and now they're doing the same sort of thing. They realize that we have this new medium. This is a way for us to go straight to the public, straight, through the, straight to the media, and hopefully get what we want. So to summarize the tone and, fi and main findings of the report. Is propagandizing still pretty much in isolated instances? And do you see it staying that way? Or is it something that perhaps maybe there needs to be a you know come to Jesus type of discussion so agencies know what the bounds are? Because as you mentioned, there is a law going back about 100 years on this very topic. Yeah, I think our general concern is that the novel is slipping into becoming the norm. It's so very easy for agencies to reach out through the internet to the public. And the temptation to move from sort of objective, neutrally toned communications to spin, the incentives lay in the wrong direction. Uh, and unless Congress is extremely watchful or you have IGs and GAO keeping a watch on this sort of stuff and pulling the fire alarm, we would expect that this is going to continue. Kevin Kosar is Senior Fellow and Governance Project Director at the R Street Institute. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for having me here. You can read more and find this interview at federalnewsradio.com slash Federal Drive.